back in 1917, there was an amazing thing happened that Our Lady appeared to three shepherd children in a small town in Portugal, Fatima. And there she, over the course of several months from May until October, spoke to the children and showed them signs of, of hell and other things, but was basically saying these things are going to happen in the world. And unless the world converts, worse things will happen. They were in the midst of World War I and they couldn't imagine a worse war. And she said, it will end soon, but there will be a greater war if people do not convert, if they do not change. So she prayed. She invited them to pray the rosary, to pray with the consecration, and to make this sign so that the whole world would know that this truly was an act of Almighty God. On that 13th of October, the sun span, spun, spinned, danced, <laughs> danced in the sky with different colors, and it was witnessed by over 80,000 people, made it into the secular media. This incredible thing to put the seal on this apparition, saying that Mary had been here, that she was asking for something. She was asking for our hearts to be converted, to pray, and to sacrifice. Now, in order to get these three shepherd children ready, before that, God sent an angel. And in the spring, summer, and fall of 1916, the angel of peace appeared to these three children to prepare them, though they didn't know it, for the coming of Our Lady. So this first apparition happened on a spring day as the children were out taking care of the flocks. They were uh, there watching, and of course, they wanted to go and spend time playing. But their parents had taught them, well, before you play, you have to pray. So they said, well, we have to pray the rosary. So they prayed the rosary together on their knees like this. Our Father, Hail Mary, 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 Hail Mary. Our Father, Hail Mary, Hail Mary. That's the short, short version of the rosary. Bet you never knew that before. But so they prayed that together and then they started to play and then there was this strong wind that came across and a young man appeared. They said he was about 14 or 15 years old. At least that what, what he looked like. And the first words he said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. So often we hear the angels in scripture saying this. Do not be afraid. He says, I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. And he taught them how to pray. He showed the reverence to Almighty God and he taught them this prayer. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love thee. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love thee. And he prayed it three times teaching them this prayer to Almighty God. It's called the Pardon Prayer. After this experience, the uh, shepherd children were very much affected and they didn't speak about it much because they were so overwhelmed by what God did. Well, they kind of went back into their old ways after a while though. And even though they'd started out praying really well, they kind of fell back. And so, in the summer of 1916, uh, as they were playing during their siesta, uh, the angel appeared to them again and said, What are you doing? Pray, pray very much. The hearts of Jesus and Mary have designs of mercy on you. God has chosen you for a special task in this world. You need to be prepared. And so then he said, offer prayers and sacrifices constantly to the Most High. And this is one of the things that we get from the whole apparition of Our Lady of Fatima as well. Offering constant sacrifices. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of sacrifices, I think, okay, these are things I have to give up, this is going to be painful, this is going to hurt. Sacrifice, the word sacrifice, comes from the Latin word, words sacrum facere, to make holy. And so what it means is not that we necessarily have to give up things, but we make each moment 
holy, offering it to Almighty God. I was driving home the other day, it was dark and I was tired, and the people on the road in front of me were not going at the particular speed that I had wanted them to go particularly, and um, the people also sometimes did not use their directionals, so I didn't know what they were doing and where they were going, and it was driving me nuts. And um, certain, well, I'm not going to talk about what went through my mind, um, that's for my confessor, but in any case... As I was driving and getting a little bit frustrated, what went through the back of my mind was, make this a sacrifice. Make everything a sacrifice for Almighty God. Right, okay. I will make driving a sacrifice to you. I will make it holy meant I couldn't be upset anymore. It's hard to offer to God something that's full of my own anger over how my expectations were not being met. So I had to change my whole attitude as I was driving along. We can offer up sacrifices of everything we do. Right now it's easy. You're in church. We're thinking about God. Plus, you have that other grace of, well, these pews are really hard and I can offer up some suffering to Almighty God. But, even when we go out of here, think about it tonight as you're flossing your teeth. Because you do floss, right? Of course, Father, right. What are you, my dentist? That as we're flossing our teeth, we can say, I'm doing this as a sacrifice for Almighty God, making this holy. Now, sacrifices can also be sacrifices of thanksgiving, sacrifices of joy, sacrifices of praise. These are things that are in the scripture. We can take our joys and offer them to God say, thank you, God. We're enjoying a great meal. And we can be saying, thank you, God. I'm lifting this to you. I'm offering this to you. And I'm thanking you for the gift of my taste buds. Because this is incredible. So we can offer everything to Almighty God. Now, in the fall of 1916, probably around September, October, the angel appeared again, and this time he was holding up the sacred host along with the chalice beneath it, and from the host was drops of blood were dripping into the chalice. And then he left them suspended in the air and went and bowed and showed the children and taught them this prayer, O Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore Thee profoundly. I offer Thee the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference by which He is offended. By the infinite merits of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I beg the conversion of poor sinners. You may recognize these prayers as prayers that we're doing now in this 100th anniversary of Fatima at the end of the rosary. We have them in the pews. But so we pray these prayers as a reminder of how we are supposed to live our lives. That we console the heart of God. This is the message of Fatima. We console the heart of God for all the ways in which he's been outraged, all the ways that the Eucharist has been sacrileged, all the ways that people are so often indifferent to his love, we offer our love. And the other part of it is we make expiation. Now what is expiation? Well, let's go back to the Gospel today. John the Baptist sees Jesus coming toward him and he points to Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now, in the Jewish culture, they knew lambs were meant for the Passover. They were slaughtered in reparation for their sins. 
That as they sinned, they would put this lamb and it would be offered to Almighty God so that the angel of death would pass over them. They reminded themselves of this every year over and over and over again. And Jesus is now called the Lamb of God, the one who would sacrifice himself so that the angel of death would pass over us so that we could have eternal life. Now, was Jesus' sacrifice enough? More than enough. Absolutely sufficient for all the sin of the world. But we are the body of Christ and God then allows us then to work in Him. So that what we do in this world now as the body of Christ allows that infinite offering of Almighty God in, in eternity to enter into our time here and now. What does this mean practically? How many of us, how many of us have family, friends who have fallen away from the church, fallen away from their faith, rejected Almighty God? How many of us even have family or friends who are so much living out destructive uh, pathways where they're hurting themselves, they're hurting others. And Jesus says to us, you are not helpless in this. Your prayers, your sacrifices, do something. They are effective. He says, when we offer up our sacrifices, as little as they are, in union with the infinite sacrifice of Christ, they're offered to the Father and then He pours down His grace. Do we each have to make our choices in life? Can we reject His grace? Absolutely. But as we work, as we pray, as we sacrifice, as we do all these things, pours out su such a superabundance of grace so that should they open the doors of their hearts just a crack, God's grace will come flooding in to transform, to make new. Our prayers, our sacrifices, unite with Christ. And they do something. This is the amazing thing. That God chooses to let us participate in expiation. In the expiation of sin, wiping it away. And it's not the grandeur of the act that matters. It's the amount of love it's done with. So, if you can't go out and do heavy fasting or, or go and live in a monastery, but all you can do is change dirty diapers. Because that's your vocation. Doing it with great love and offering that as a sacrifice, making it holy to Almighty God, that can transform the world. It's amazing. This pardon prayer, we say, my God, I believe, I adore, I hope, I love thee. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love Thee. We offer to God our love to cover over, cover over the lack of love of others. And God sees that. God loves that. God uses that. May we, on this 100th anniversary of Fatima, Take to heart the message of the angel, the message of Our Lady. And may we reach out in sacrifice, making every action holy, so that God can transform the world.